Here we are now in this final session, and I want to talk about ten effects of believing these things. I hope I can address a few of the things that have been asked me. I don't know where it might fit, so I'm going to say it right now. Somebody asked me about, are you going to say anything about hyper-Calvinism? So let me say a word about it. I'll define it, and then I'll say why I'm not it. Hyper-Calvinism doesn't mean serious, real Calvinists, like seven-pointers. That's not what hyper-Calvinism... Hyper-Calvinism is a technical phrase from the 18th century. And it referred, especially to people in England, who carried the doctrine of election and irresistible grace to an unbiblical conclusion, namely, that the only people to whom you should preach the gospel and offer its benefits are those in whom you see evidences of election. Because they're the only ones for whom it will work. Wrong. Bad conclusion. And the main opponent was Andrew Fuller. And his main book in response to hyper-Calvinism was Gospel Worthy of All Acceptance. Read it. You can get all of his works. In which he argued, no way does Calvinism imply you should only preach the gospel to those in whom you see some evidences of election. It's not a whiff in the Bible to imply that. You preach the gospel indiscriminately to everyone. Whosoever will, let him come. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. You open the door, I come in. That's not the whole story. It's just a true story. So, I'm not a hyper-Calvinist. I hate hyper-Calvinism. There aren't many around today. But it's an example of human logic trumping biblical clarity. Arminians are prone to this. Calvinists are prone to this. Anybody who is loving to see things fit together coherently can fall prey to the being led by logic, not being led by exegesis. And the way we've approached this seminar is at least an effort to be governed by texts, not by, well, if this is true, then this must be true, and this must be true, and this must be true, and so that's why we believe in limited atonement. I heard that argument so many times that Calvinists are driven by their iron-clad, iron-clad logic to unbiblical conclusions. I said, well, that's what I see in Arminianism, but I don't see it here. History will judge whether that's what's governing me or not. 